the battle for the mind. That's so very important subject. And I believe the Apostle Paul encouraged so many people and the churches to have the minds prepared for the battle that really rages for our minds and Satan has a battle raging for our soul. Second Corinthians chapter 10. So if we can all hop over to Second Corinthians chapter 10 and we'll be looking at a few verses here that the Apostle Paul encouraged about the battle of the mind. Pick it up with verse 3 and it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In verse 6, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is an interesting passage, a great challenge, a warning, but more than a warning, an encouragement to have our minds prepared for the battle. We know that God has given us the victory. We know that even though there's a battle going on and Satan wants to attack us and uh, hurt us or defeat us, we know that we have the victory in Christ. The passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. We can look at that verse real quickly. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place, verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. We have the victory. You know, there's a difference between our brain and our mind. There's a difference. Our brain is the location in our body where we are thinking at. Our mind is what we are thinking on. And our mind is, is the really the battlefield that rages. And we can have, even as believers, our minds can be deceived. I'd like to have a volunteer, Pastor Kennedy, I'm going to ask you to come on up. So I know you're a, a good, willing servant of the Lord to come up here. I'd come down there and talk to you, but I'm on all these cameras and I want the people in Zoom to see it. So, and uh, for those folks on, on my Zoom, this is Pastor Kennedy. And obviously those in uh, Wellingboro Christian Center Zoom. So I have two cards here, Pastor Kennedy. I got two cards here. I got two cards here. And I want you to tell me. Which car is bigger? The one in five. The bottom one's bigger. Okay. So, how about you at home? Which one's bigger? The bottom one is bigger, right? All right. Now watch, Pastor Kennedy. Now I took the bottom one, and put it on the top. Which one's bigger, Pastor Kennedy? The bottom. The bottom one. So the bottom one, which was at the top, which is now at the bottom, he's saying it's bigger. So now watch carefully. Which one's bigger? The bottom one. How can the bottom one now be bigger? And then we switch it up here. The next, the one at the top is now bigger at the bottom. They're both the same size. <laughs> They're both the same size. You see, the reason why that looks different, don't go anywhere. The reason why that looks different is because our eyes can deceive us. And it's actually an optical illusion. Okay, so I have a couple cards here. I have five cards with lots of numbers on it, okay? And, uh, Pastor Kennedy, I want you to pick a number, 1 through 31, okay? Don't tell anybody. Don't forget it. Okay, now is your number on that card? Yeah, yeah, okay. And is your number on that card? Yes. And is your number on that card? Yes. Wow. And is your number on that card? No. And is your number on that card? Uh, no. Okay, now I'm just double check now. Because a lot of people get that wrong. There's so many numbers. Your number on that card? Yes. And your number is on that card? Yes. And your number is on that card? Yes. And your number is not on that card? Yes. And your number is not on that card? Yes. Okay. So your number is 21. <laughs> Just say yes, you got it right. <laughs> did I get it right or no? Yes, you got it. Yes, I did. Okay. Now. There's a reason why I got it right. It's because I know the secret. It's a mathematical formula. 
but he doesn't know. He just doesn't understand how I knew that. And see, our minds don't understand everything. Now, if I explain it to him, then the darkness will be taken off of his eyes and he'll be able to see the truth. Two illustrations, one mathematical formula, one optical illusion, and our minds can trick us in not understanding everything that we see. And there's a, there's a battle raging for our minds and sometimes our minds trick us. Now, those that do not know, do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, they have a blindness on their eyes, a spiritual darkness that they can't see the truth of the Word of God and the truth of what God wants, wants to do in their lives and in this world. So there's a, there's a battle raging. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. The Apostle Paul encouraged the church of Ephesus and said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, for against, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice carefully, verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Back over to 2 Corinthians. Why did the Apostle Paul say we're not wrestling against flesh and blood? Because we're wrestling in a spiritual battle, and the spiritual battle is in our mind. In verse 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, verse 4, are not carnal, that means fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds or strongholds in our minds.